Yeah. All right. Uh, as a reminder, Maryland will play tomorrow in the first game scheduled for 2 p.m. Uh, against George Mason. Tonight we have head coach Rob Vaughn and student athlete Nick LaRusso. Uh, we will start with an opening statement from coach and then take questions for Nick. Yeah, just tough game. Tough game. I mean, going up against the number one team in the country that they played like a Rhett Louder was absolutely outstanding. I mean, his stuff was good. Outside of Nicky Lowe getting him a couple times, there wasn't wasn't many mistakes there. He was outstanding. Their offense was outstanding. You know, when we – a pretty good game there until the seventh. You know, it's a 9-3 game. You go to the bullpen, kind of had the bases loaded. You have a chance to get yourself back in it. We just couldn't quite get that big swing. And, you know, Ray made a really good pitch to get out of that inning. Uh, or Massey, I'm sorry. Massey made a good pitch to get out of that inning. And then just couldn't quite get it going. Couldn't stop it after that. So, tough night, but we got to bounce back quick. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us, George Mason in particular. So, we got to get – Get in bed and get ready to go and come out and get after him a little bit tomorrow. Questions for Nick. Uh, yeah, Nick, just so I love Nick's father. So good. Is it the stuff? And you know, how, how well he makes his defensive work? Yeah, it's yeah. just, um, you know, a guy like that when he can command, you know, his three pitches and throw it in any count. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, there were times where I was in advantage counts and, you know, you know normally you'd, you'd see the heater, but, you know, he fooled me a couple of times on throwing the change up. And I feel like that was one of his better pitches tonight. You know, the ability to, uh, you know, tunnel the same pitches as well. You know, his fastball change up and slider all came from the same slot and all, you know, broke different directions. So a very effective pitcher. Okay. Just what the heck did you guys do for four hours and 45 minutes? Plot of waiting for this game to start? Just, uh, just playing some games, games that we know, and, uh, you know, just bonding. Just bonding all together. Uh, how excited were you guys to to get the word that the game was going to be for? I'm assuming you all wanted to play baseball. I thought. Oh, very excited, very excited. You know, waiting around all day, it was uh definitely tough, but uh, you know, once we got the nod, uh, very exciting, very exciting. Nick, did you feel like it was going to be the team that came out with the most energy early that was going to be this game? Uh, I just felt like it was going to be the team that you know kept that energy, you know, throughout the whole entire game maybe not in the first but uh you know wake you know they kind of had the momentum from the jump and kind of stayed with it you know and they fed into that crowd pretty well tonight okay. uh, Nick, you had those two home runs um against uh ladder you felt like you almost touched them when you hit those home runs um was there some sort of energy in the dugout like this guy isn't like invincible and whatnot yeah exactly you know um just getting the first one off the board was uh was definitely big but uh you know we communicate a lot and you know what he's throwing and uh you could tell in the first inning he had he had more juice than you know he did say in the fourth and fifth. So uh, you know I told the guys you know he's you know slowing down just a little bit, but he was still very effective. And uh, you know we ended up putting you know two more across or he had two more across in the seventh when he uh, when he came back out there. But uh, you know overall he was very effective throughout the whole game. Nick, you mentioned the Wake Forest crowd. What did you think that there was not just for you guys, but also in terms of any guys in the team? Yeah, exactly. Like you said, it just creates energy for that home crowd. It, uh, you know, at times could, uh, you know, speed up, you know, some of our guys as well. But, uh, you know, I thought we did a good job kind of, you know, pushing the crowd aside. But, uh, you know, you could definitely tell the hitters and the pitchers fed into that for Wake. Anything else for Nick? All right. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, yeah I think Sam's going to put you down. Yeah, better off. Question for Coach? Um, like I assume. Uh, you know, Ludman and Josh will be available tomorrow. Falcon hasn't gone yet. Um, you know, how do you plan to attack tomorrow knowing who you have available who you don't? Obviously, you know, you want to be George Mason, you're not overlooking them, but you'd like to save some guys for, you know, potentially wait tomorrow night. How do you just get that feeling out? Yeah, I think, you know, we talked about how important it is, obviously, to stay on the winner side if you can. You know, now that you're on the other side, it's really – you you just survive in advance. I told our guys in that situation, I said, you know, after the game – we're going to we're gonna do what we got to do to win game one. And then we'll regroup. I don't care if I have to pitch game two against Wake. We'll figure that out. Um, but but you don't get to stay together for another game if you don't go through Mason. And they're in bed. They're sleeping. They're in a good spot. And and they're playing some darn good baseball. Man, that Northeastern team they smacked earlier today is a really good team. Um, so they're playing good baseball. They're confident. 
they're 30 minutes down the road. I can tell you they'll, they'll, they would love to end our season tomorrow. So we're going to do whatever we got to do to win that one. Then we'll take a look at the drawing board and see what the heck's there and, and try to go get after them in the second one if we're fortunate enough to get there. That's it. Coach, after, you know, waiting so long to play this game, do you feel like the way the boys came out in the uh, first game is when they were functioning the guy? Yeah, I mean, it's the number one team in the country that just played like the number one team in the country. It's what it was, you know. And, um, I mean, Rhett Louder, I've been doing this for a little while now. I mean, that's I, – I've said all along, like I said, I did an interview this year um, before the year started, and I said Thomas Harrington's the best arm I've seen in 11 years. That's not even close to the best arm I've seen in the opposing dugout since I've been coaching. I mean, his stuff was electric. He throws all strikes. They all go different directions. He's got poise, but he's got intensity. I mean, that guy is – that guy's going to pitch in the big leagues and make a lot of money one day, probably here pretty dang soon. Um, pretty special arm. And and then their offense it did what their offense did. I mean, that's why they're number one. They've got elite level pitching. They've got an elite offense, and they were relentless tonight. And they had great energy from the jump and kind of put us on our heels early. And when you got Rhett Louder on the mound and give him a four spot in the first, you got your work cut out. And I thought we competed to get ourselves back in it, um, but we just couldn't quite get that blow to, to, to get some of our, our older, more veteran arms in the game late to try to keep it close. Plus, just how, how frustrating was it to have to sit and, and wait so long to play? And how do you think your guys kind of handled that piece of things today? Yeah, you know, it's tough, especially when you're sitting there and it's blue skies out there. But I think it's the right call. You know, I think, you know, me and Walt, along with the, the NCAA staff, kind of looked at it and said, you know, there's a really good chance we get out here and we're going to play for 30 minutes and we're going to burn Rhett and Dean. I don't think either one of us wanted that. It's not good for the game. It's not good for either one of our teams. So I think it was the right call to do what we did. And I honestly thought our guys handled it well. You know, I'm sitting in there and, you know, where they're playing whatever they're playing in there that college kids play and they're having fun. And I'm like, you know what, I'm watching Matt Shaw in the middle of that. And I literally looked at our coach. And I said, here pretty soon in a couple of years, like some of these other guys are going to be sitting saying, they were they remember sitting in that in that thing playing mafia with Matt Shaw leading the way who's going to be playing the big league. So I thought they handled it well. Um, I don't think the the delay affected us in a negative way. I thought we just got smacked by a really good team tonight. How surprising was it for you to get out there and to see a Wake Forest crowd come back to the to the stadium and and the with the ferocity that yeah. they did as well. I mean they had they had a few more hours of tailgate. They were ready to go. Um, you know, they were they were awesome tonight. I, I didn't know what it was going to be like. You know, I, we played Wake here in 2017 in the regional, and I can tell you they had a darn good team then, and it wasn't even remotely like this from a crowd perspective. And I think that's a tribute to what Walt and his coaching staff have built here. I mean, they put a winner on the field, and the community showed up and supported them. And, you know, when we walked back on, there was like five people in the stands. I was like, all right, we're ready to go. And then 30 minutes later, it was rocking. So credit to them. They, that's a product of what, what this coaching staff has built here. And, man, they do a great job. And and those guys were electric tonight. We'll go middle front and then second or left. Uh, that six run seventh inning for Wake, they only had one hit in that inning. Um, when you're just struggling with command issues like that, um, is it, you know, one, how do you overcome that? But two, is there kind of a silver lining in saying, you know, a lot of these runs were kind of self-inflicted? I don't know if I'd call it a silver lining. I, I appreciate you trying to find a positive spin on that, Taylor. That makes me feel better. Um, yeah, it, it, it's tough. It's tough because, you know, you're in that position and, um, you know, you look at, at Wake's pitching staff, they got a lot of elite arms. I mean, Manasi's coming in in a 21 to six game throwing 100. Like, they're good, man. They've got They've got a lot of depth on the mound. And again, that's a credit to their recruiting and how they've done that. And, you know, there's no secret. We, didn't, we don't have quite as much depth as they do on the mound. And, you know, you, you don't want to bring some of those guys in when you're when you're down seven or eight and you're facing the arms you're going to face because, um, you know, it's an uphill battle and, you know, you know, you got you got a long fight to get back in it. So you're trying to be strategic about it. And, you know, some of it's youth and some of it's some young guys that just maybe aren't ready for that moment yet. But you got to get them out there and see what you got. Some of it is um, is just kind of a failure to execute, you know, so um, I don't really think there's a silver lining there. I think it's just, you know kind of the way it works. If you you make a team line up and go hit you, you know, this team might do it because those that those guys can really hit. But you, you wish you'd have made them earn a tick more than that. But but at the same time, they own the zone. They had really professional approaches. And I tell you what, it's not easy. In a 21 to 6 game, those guys weren't giving away at bats. And again, that's the reason that they're the number one team in the country right now is they stayed hooked in the whole time. And and that's how that thing turns into a pretty messy game at the end. We'll go say around that. You kept Nick Dean into the game after losing him pretty quite early um, in the bullpen as well. 
but the intensive between that decision to keep him in the game and what you told him during the round visit. Yeah, you know, you're you're in that situation. You're you're trying to look at one of two things. You know, number one, you know, a lot of times starters get better as they go. Sometimes that first inning's a little bit of a bear. Um, and you're also trying to see a little bit like, are we going to be able to get to red? You know, if we could have got to louder and a little bit earlier, maybe tied it a little bit quicker, maybe you go get Nikki a little bit, a little bit earlier. Um, but the way he was throwing the ball tonight, we needed some length because you know, the more outs you have to get against that lineup, um, it's tough. It's tough to get outs against that lineup. And so, you know, as long as he was doing that, we were like, you know what, that's less outs we got to get on the back end. So I thought Nikki did a good job of competing through it. And he didn't have great feel for his stuff tonight. And I think, you know, Wake did a great job of kind of punishing him for it. You know, didn't have great feel for his secondary stuff, but um, but we needed as much length as we could out of him so that you're not having to throw Falco, Lippman, Johnson, some of those guys knowing that we needed them. And, you know, if we could, we were, we were a swing away, you know, you have the bases loaded two outs there. If we go split a gap, Dave Falco was coming into the game, you know, and if you're playing a one or two run game against that team, you feel like you can maybe send it a little bit, but when you're chasing seven or eight runs, it's kind of harder to get there. So we just need as much length as we could out of Nikki tonight. We'll go front row right and then front row middle. Coach, do you feel like that the middle of your fourth order was kind of tougher being kind of through, through some, I guess, patches in the start and then kind of, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just good. I mean, you know, I thought, you know, Tommy Hawk is their tone setter and that guy plays with energy. That guy's, that guy's a dry, guy that drives opposing coaches nuts and is your favorite player on the team. I, I love the way that kid plays and we were able to control him tonight, which was good. Um, but, you know, I mean, navigating Costello, Kurtz, Wilkin, Johnson, Bennett, I mean, where do you breathe, you know? And I think, it's just a matter of picking your poison a little bit. And, you know, even though Tommy didn't maybe play a huge role on the offside, made a big time play early on that diving play. And that's who knows what happens. That ball gets in a gap. We score a run there. Maybe maybe the whole thing changes. So even though he didn't get a knock tonight, he he affected the game with his defense there. Um, but, you know, I don't I don't think it's just the middle. I think it's just a strain to get through that lineup. And when our lineup's really going the right way, it, it feels the same way, you know, Um but Johnson was elite tonight. My goodness, that guy took good swings. Bennett took really good swings um, up and down the lineup. When Wilkins up the plate, it's not comfortable. That guy gets a swing off, and Kurtz is one of the best hitters I've ever seen. Um, so that's just a tough lineup. I don't think I don't think there's a place that you can breathe, and I think that's the reason they've won 49 games and they're the number one team in the country right now. Uh, it's been a bit of a slow start for Kofi with the last job in the Big Ten tournament these past few games. Uh, just how does he kind of turn that around? If you guys are to win, you know, you rattle off three wins in a row, how big is he going to be in that? No, oh, yeah, there's a no secret. You guys have heard me say it a thousand times. You need your best players to be your best players. And, you know, guys have executed to, to Maddie. They've made some really good pitches. And, you know, he took a couple of good swings late there. And, um, but Rhett really made good pitches to him, you know, really, really good pitches to him. And it was just tough. Like he's down, he's throwing a ton of strikes. And, um, and he was just, he was good tonight. But yeah, Matt, Maddie's fine. That's the beauty of him. The thing I've praised about him his whole career is his mental state and the way he approaches every game. And, I can promise you that guy's not pressing anymore tomorrow. He's going to come out. He's prepared. He's worked. He's ready. He's going to come out and send it tomorrow. But but yeah, there's no secret. We're, we're going to need we're going to need all those guys. I mean, we're going that that game tomorrow at two o'clock or whatever time we're playing is going to be a bear, and we're gonna we're gonna have to come out, and our offense is going to have to be good, and we're going to have to just piece together and see what we got. You guys, will start with coach. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Coach, really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. thank you, guys. Thank you. 
So it is so it is uh it is uh the earliest is five and then if they if like B1 goes long, there has to be 55 minutes in between what we get. Okay, sorry. Good. Good. The first is a two, right? Two five. Yep, yep. Five. The first B five is two five. <laughs> I would consider that a modifier. Well, I'm walking to hit 14 dollars in the last two minutes. Don't be okay. Just keep going to the back. Did Justin think in the play for him? Did you, you were in a spot, right? Where you had to go do the high school football game and then come out on that one. Yeah. I remember going out and play football game before I came out. Yeah, so you got to do that too. Yeah, so it's a two. Yeah, so it's a Hey everybody, uh, tonight we're joined by Wake Forest head coach Tom Walter, as well as student athlete Brett Louder. We will start uh, with an opening statement from coach and then take questions for Brett. Uh, yeah, great win. You know, again, you know, going 2 and 0 to start a regional is always a huge advantage. Um, somebody's got to come through the loser's bracket and, and beat you twice to advance. So obviously, love the spot we're in. <clears throat> you know, Rhett came out, was so good so early that's you know those first six innings were about as good as i've seen anybody throw uh the baseball at this level and uh was just really impressed uh with rhett tonight and um you know our team offensively got on the board early stacked some quality at bats there in the first inning against a good pitcher in dean you know scored four in the first and then came out in the third scored two more rhett got us a couple big shutdown innings and uh you know we kind of rolled from there was really proud of the Deacon Nation that showed up today, you know, coming back the way they did for that 1045 start. Shout out to Coach Forbes, who uh, whose tweet, I'm sure, motivated at least five or 600 people to, to make the trip back over to the couch. So I just want to thank the Deacon Nation. Uh, great win for our ball club. And, you know, it all starts with Rhett Louder. Really we'll start, proud of him. We'll start front right here, Rhett. Rhett, uh, I haven't watched all your starts, but I've seen a good amount. It seemed to me like you were a little more fired up in the first inning. Your warm up tosses is that true? And can you, if so, can you elaborate on why? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I definitely was a little bit more fired up today. I mean, it was a long day, and and then just getting on the field it was, uh, and, and in this environment, like a region where everything was here at the couch. You know, there's a, just a bunch of things that go into it, but no, I was definitely fired up, and uh, the crowd really got me going too. Was it more the crowd, or was it more self motivation from you knowing you had to get yourself going for a 1045 start? Um, I think it was probably just a combination of all those things. You know, I, I wouldn't put it specifically um, in just me having to fire myself up. You know, when we did get that 1045 first pitch, I, I instantly got a little bit of a wave of adrenaline going right from there. So I, I think that might have been a little bit of it too. Uh, Lefty. Brad, what, what the heck did you do for all five hours? And then how did you keep yourself ready to go? 
I, I did a lot of sitting around, but I listened to a lot of music, try to stay locked in, um, try to keep my body loose, drink a lot of water, but I probably could have done a little bit better job of that. I think it caught up to me um, in the end, but, you know, just try to stay, stay locked in. As much. How music you listen to? Oh, I had a, well, we had a long delay, so I got to switch it up a little bit. Right after we got uh, pushed back from six, I was kind of a little bit more mellow, just trying to calm myself down for a little bit, but then I got fired back up about 10 o'clock. We'll go front middle. Um, remember the, the top three, and I know I'm light up, uh, Schlager, Schaller, so really just top three. Um, just what was your kind of your game plan for, uh, you know, for attacking those guys first place? Yeah, super good. One, two, three, top of the order. One of the best I probably faced all year. Um, you know, I came out firing, so I was just kind of attacking them early. Uh, and I knew I knew I, I, I kind of want to keep them off the bases because I knew they probably would do the most damage to the less. Um, out of those three or top four that got on base, probably had a better off I would be. Um, but, you know, I kind of just tried to attack all game. I know I left a couple pitches over the plate for LaRusso, and he, he did some damage, but um, – didn't hurt us too bad because I got the guys before him most of the time. Yes, Rhett, I know you mentioned leaving the two pitches over the plate for LaRusso. Was there kind of anything specific that you, you saw in those at bats against him? And then can you walk me through just that kind of flip in the seventh inning as well? It seemed like you were fatigued at the end. Yeah, so the two pitches to LaRusso, the first one I shook to a slider, um, which he, he's decent on sliders, but it was it's just he's a good, good hitter in general. So if you make a mistake over the plate, he's going to do some damage on it. And I kind of left that one, backed it up right over the heart of the plate. And that's going to happen to a good hitter like that. Um, and then, yeah, in that, in that seventh inning, I left the fastball kind of ran back over the plate. It pretty good at bat. It was three, two. And I was pretty, pretty tired. So that tends to happen when I get a little bit more fatigued. I let balls drift back over the middle of the plate, which I wasn't really su surprised. That was my miss there. Um, yeah. I think it was like a lot of things. It was, I mean, it was the first time pitching at one thirty in the morning. Um, <laughs> I probably could have ate a little bit more throughout the day, but you know, I kind of just hit a wall right there and gave it everything I had. But how surprising was it for you? And, and I guess you would speak for the team in general uh, to see how the crowd came back and were so um, vibrant. Oh, it was awesome. I like, I can still hear like the two strike chants and, and everything that kept me going. I was, I was like, it's great. And we're so grateful to have, like, especially at this late start, a lot of uncertainty today. Um, so to have, that amount of people and be that loud um, this late, it was, it was awesome. Like, you, you're going to be talking about that forever, probably. Let's go with Brett. All right. Oh, one more. Yeah. Just really quickly, I guess last year, um, you guys lost the regional conference mm -hmm. to Maryland. Um, was any of that, I guess, a driving factor, or I guess was this just kind of business as usual as you got here? You know, you could probably look at it a couple of ways. We try to take it business as usual, but there's definitely a lot of like angst from. From Pat from last year, but I think going into the game, we we just try to take it as any other game, any other opponent. You know, when you're out there, um, we just have to play a good style of baseball, and we knew that we've come out to, on top. So I think that we just took our game plan. We're going to be a tough team to beat. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for that. And Ryan, you did that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coach. Yeah. Sure. So that's it. Well, do you feel like you're going to need that same force coming in the locker room before every game now? I don't know that we'll need him every game, but he's welcome anytime he wants to come yeah. um, because he he had our guys fired up and uh, the uh, it, it, we needed it. We needed a little shot of adrenaline. It was uh, I was I was I was pumped to see him in there. Yeah, so you played both George Mason and Maryland already. If you had to pick, who would you rather face tomorrow? I you know I, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think again, uh, you know. I don't know that I'd, I'd have a pick on that. You know, I think both are really good teams, obviously, that have had great years, and, and both are tough and well-coached. So, you know, whoever we play is going to give us all we can handle. I'm sure of that. Yes, Do you get a sense with the, the rain delay that the winner of this game was probably going to be the team that kind of hit first, that really threw kind of that first punch? And how big was it that it was, you know, your team in the first inning, really, with a big, big first punch? Yeah, for sure. We talk about momentum all the time. I mean, uh, you know, keeping the momentum in our dugout, um, you know, is huge. And, you know, Rhett coming out there and throwing the ball like he did in the first inning was a huge momentum boost. And then we score four and the momentum kind of stayed that way. And then they kind of grabbed a little bit of momentum there with the Larusa homer and they get two guys on with nobody out. And then Massey comes in and, and strikes out three, you know, walks a guy in there after two outs. But Massey comes in there, gets us three huge outs and kind of threw the momentum back into our dugout. So. 
you know, again, momentum is, you know, when you're dealing with college kids, 18 to 22 year old kids, I mean, momentum is, is everything. Less than time, John, I'm curious about a, a 21-6 using Cam and Austin tonight. What was the thought process there? Then kind of who do you have on the board for Monarchs game? Yeah, the thought process was we're hoping that we tomorrow, you know, we want to go Josh Hartle, and then if we can get a lead, we're going to go right to Sean Sullivan to close out the game. And I didn't, I didn't want to have that game where, you know, we're trying to force Manasi in there at the end of the game, you know. So if we can close it out tomorrow, I didn't want to feel like we had to pitch Manasi. So he would go, he would, it wouldn't be two weeks since he's thrown for in the in the super. So you know, again, if we can get a good start out of out of Josh Hartle and then go right to Sully to close it out, that's what we're going to do. Um, now, you know, if we're behind, we might save Sully to start, you know, the the Monday game, and we might just pitch that a little differently. But, you know, I, I don't see a scenario where, you know, we would use Manasi or Massey tomorrow. Um, you know, if, you know, if we have to, obviously we will, but I think it's more likely that it'll be Hartle right to Sullivan to try to finish it out that way. Huh? Well, I've heard you talk for three years about Red and kind of it takes him a minute or two sometimes to get the change up established and get the feel for it. Is the secret getting a 1045 start and having him <laughs> so fired up with adrenaline? No, again, I, I did well in the first in the first I didn't think he really had his good change up in the first, but then starting in the second, he really had his good change up. You know, it's kind of more slider in the first. Um, but, uh, but after that, his changeup was as good as, as good as I've seen. And, and, and again, I, I've been telling you guys for a while that I think you're going to see Rhett take it to a new gear once he hit the postseason. I think he remembers his start last year. And uh, I think he went out there and, and wanted to show the world who he was. And he, and he did that then probably shouldn't have started him out there in the seventh, because, you know, if I had known, you know, we didn't realize that he hadn't eaten anything in five hours. So I think he just kind of ran out of gas. Um, so if I knew what I knew, I probably wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have run them out there in the seven. Yeah. Right here. Coach, you pitched this after obviously a week. Um, do you feel like that sometimes when you put a ton of, uh, ton of runs and feel like now it's missed extra point, um, do you feel like that sometimes your offense gets, I guess, underrated or down in the midst of such great pitching? Uh, I, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, I mean, again, you know, look at the day we had offensively today. I mean, you look at the middle of our order, you know, Kurtz, Wilkin, you know, Johnson, Bennett, um, and Bennett Lee had great at bats all day, you know, so like three through, you know, three through seven, you know, we had a great day offensively today. And even Danny Corona had a couple of hits, had a big hit with the bases loaded, then obviously had a home run late. So, you know, really three through eight in the lineup, we did a really great job today. So, um, yeah, I do think at times our offense gets a little overlooked, but again, we, we believe in our offense and we know how good it is. The last year to wrap this up. Um, uh, what the heck does Tom Walter do for a five hour and third inning play? And was there ever a concern for you that the game might not get in tonight? And if so, what the heck would that have looked like? Yeah, I would have, you know, it, 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 there was concern that it wasn't going to get in. I'm glad we were able to get it in, obviously. You know, and, and the worry about not getting it in, truthfully, was if Rhett had to pitch tomorrow, then all of a sudden, if you do, if you are fortunate enough to get to a super, then it starts to impact when he can pitch next weekend. Like, if he throws on Sunday, you can't bring him back on Friday, you know, so then you're kind of locked in throwing Seth Keener on Friday, you know, in the in the super, and and you're, you know, you're hoping to get through with, you know, again, having Sullivan and all those guys. So point of the matter is, is it was, it's huge for us. If we can advance the next weekend, having gotten this one in today is huge. And then what did you do during all those times? Uh, I watched a lot of college baseball games. I was watching the Clemson, the Clemson, Tennessee game. What an unbelievable game that was. Both teams played so great. I'm just uh, a feel for Clemson because they played, they played fantastic baseball and, and Tennessee just came out on top, but uh so I watched a bunch of college baseball, looked at a little more film on Maryland. And, uh, you know, again, I didn't listen to any music like Rhett did. I, I surrounded myself with college baseball. All right. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Coach is miracle. Good yeah, I think he's fine. It's just caught his funny bone. All right. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you.